Hello everyone. I hope you're doing good and staying safe. Welcome to another video tutorial on IPL data analysis using Python by Simply Code. As you guys know that IPL is a cricket league played by different franchises across the nation over a period of two months. So in this tutorial, we'll go through some of the performances and statistics of different IPL teams and players in the last season, that is 2021. We'll export different data sets and try to derive meaningful insights from it. We'll also create beautiful data visualizations like graphs and plots using these data sets. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest tech content and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from as well. Without any further delay, let's get started. So in this video, we'll be using two data sets to perform our analysis. Now let me show you the CSV files. So this is my IPL dataset folder which is on my desktop and these are the two files that we are going to use. The first dataset has information about matches played between 2008 and 2020. Let me open this dataset. Alright, you can see here there are total, let me just go to the top and I'll show you the number of rows we have. We have around 817 rows of information. Alright, you can see this is the match ID. So these are all unique IDs of the matches held between 2008 and 2020. Then we have the city in which the match was held. We have the date on which the match was played. We have the player of the match which is man of the match basically. Then we have the venue column that is the name of the stadium where the match was conducted. We have a column called neutral venue, whether the venue is neutral or not. Then we have the teams, team 1 and team 2. We have information about who won the toss. Then after winning the toss, whether they decided to field first or bat first. Then we have the winner who won the match. We have the results, whether it was won by runs or by wickets. Then we have the margin. So these big numbers are basically runs, 140, 33, all these are runs. If you see here. One of the match was a very close contest where the winning team won by just 6 runs. We have information about whether the match was an eliminator or a league match. We have a method whether there was any DL method applied for deciding the result. And we have information about the two umpires. These are basically field umpires. Next coming to the second data set. Now in the second data set, let me open it. Alright, so this data set has all the information for each ball bowled since 2008 till 2020. You see you have the match ID, then we have the information about innings, whether it was a first inning or a second innings. We have which over it was, then we have which ball it was, basically the number of ball in an over. Then we have the batsman who faced the delivery. Then we have the batsman who was at the non-striker end or the player who was at the non-striker end. Then we have information about who the bowler was and how many runs were scored of that ball, whether there were any extra runs and the total runs that were scored in each ball. We have whether it was a boundary or a non-boundary. Then we have whether there was a wicket taken in that delivery. Now we have information about player dismissed. Let me apply a filter and show you the values that we have. You can see here these are the players who have been dismissed. Now similarly let's see for extra types. You have buys, leg buys, no balls, penalty, wide deliveries. Then we have the batting team and the bowling team. All right. So we will be using these two data sets to perform exploratory data analysis and answer particular questions like the total number of matches played in each season, the total number of runs scored in each season. We'll also look at the number of tosses won by each team, the toss decision for each season. Then we'll see whether the team opted to bat or to field first after winning the toss. We'll also understand how a certain player has performed so far in IPL, the player who has scored the most number of runs and who has won the most number of man of the match awards. Alright, so let me take you to my Jupyter Notebook. So this is the Jupyter Notebook we'll be using. 
for our demo i have already written a few lines of code you can see it here all right so let's begin with the first step which is to import the necessary libraries so to perform our data analysis on the ipl data set i would need the numpy library for numerical computation we'll also need pandas library so i've imported it as pd and numpy as np then we have two visualization libraries matplotlib and seaborn the next step is to load the data set so here i am loading two of my data sets which is match underscore data and the balls data set so to load the data set i am using pandas library and the read underscore csv function and within this parenthesis i'll pass in my file location followed by the file name and the extension of the file so here i have my data set now let me copy this location and i'll paste the location here will convert all the backslash to forward slash and finally i'll give my data set file name let me just copy it and i'll paste it there okay followed by the file name extension which is .csv now i will just copy this and similarly i'll paste for my second data set we'll replace the file name i'll copy this file name and i'll paste it here okay now let me go ahead and first run the first cell to import all the necessary libraries you can see we have successfully imported all the libraries then let's run the second cell which is to load the data sets so the first data set which is ipl matches i'm storing in a variable called match underscore data this will be stored in the form of a data frame and the second data set which is ipl ball by ball i'm storing in a variable called ball underscore data let's run it okay there is some error all right we need to put these within double quotes don't forget to put the location on within double quotes otherwise it will throw an error now let's run it again there you go so i have successfully imported my data sets now let's print the top five rows from both the data frames now to print the top five rows i'll use the head function first i'll write match underscore data which is my variable name for the first data frame followed by the head function if i run this you can see i have the top five rows from my matches data set you see here we have the id the city date player of the match if i scroll to the right you can see winner result result margin eliminator method and the two umpires similarly let's see the top five rows from the ball data set so i'll write ball underscore data which is my variable name followed by the head function let's run it using shift enter there you go so we have the top five rows from the ball by ball data set as well next let's check if there are any null values in both the data sets now to check for null values you can use the is null function and to find the total number of null values you can use the sum function so i'll write match underscore data dot I'll use the isNull function to see if there are any null values and to find the sum I'll use the sum function there you go if I scroll down you see here there are 13 null values or missing values in the city column then you have four null values in the player of the match column method you have 797 null values similarly you have some null values for eliminator and result margin as well let me just copy this now we'll check for null values present in our ball data set i'll replace this by ball let's run it there you go if i scroll down here you can see for dismissal underscore kind then you have player underscore dismissed fielder extra types these all have a lot of null values okay now you can print the shape of the data frame and also all the columns present in it 
for that i'll use the shape method i'll write match underscore data dot shape you see here in our match data set we have 816 rows of information and 17 columns similarly if you want you can check for the ball data set there you go so the first value represents the number of rows and then we have the number of columns now if you want to print all the columns present in a data set you can use the columns attribute you can see it here in the result we have all the columns printed that are present in the match data set now let's look at the total number of matches played so far the cities where the matches have been played and the team which have participated so for this I will be using three print statement so I'll write print match played so far I'll give a colon and then with a comma I'll write my variable name which is match underscore data and I'll give shape as zero let's print this you can see matches played so far is 816 I'll write another print statement this is to check the cities in which the matches have been played and I'll only print the unique cities so I'll give a backslash n I'll write cities played at let's give a colon now and I'll use my variable which is match underscore data and within square brackets I'll give my column name that is city so that it will extract only the city values and I'll give my function as unique since I want to know only the unique cities in which the matches have been played if I run this there you go so these are the cities in which the matches have been played from 2008 till 2020 you have Bangalore, Chandigarh, Delhi, you have Durban, Port Elizabeth, you have Centurion there's Ahmedabad, Katak, Nagpur, Kochi, Kanpur, Bangalore, Dubai and other cities as well okay now we'll print one more result that is the total number of teams that have participated so far so I'll write print within single quotes I'll give backslash n so that there's a space I'll write teams participated give a colon and then I'll give a comma I'll pass in my variable name which is match underscore data then within square brackets I'll give team 1 and again I'll use the unique function if I run this in the result you can see these are the teams that have participated so far you have RCB, the Kings 11 Punjab, the Lee Daredevils last year there was Delhi Capitals you have the rising Pune Super Giants, Chennai Super Kings Kuchi Tuskers, Deccan Chargers and other teams as well all right now we will add a new column to our table that will have the year value extracted from the date column of the matches data frame now if I go to the top I'll show you what I want to do so in this matches data frame you have a column called date which has all the date values in which the matches were played from this date value I want to extract only the year so let me show you how to do it now to extract the year value from the date column I'll use a function which is date time index now let me show you how to use it I'll write my variable name which is match underscore data and I'll create a new column called season now this season column will have only the year values I'll give pd dot and I'll use my function date time index and within this function I'll pass in my variable which is match underscore data and within 
square brackets i'll give my date column i'll come out and i'll give my attribute which is year now in the next line let me print the head of the data frame now i'll write match underscore data dot head if i run this scroll down a bit and i'll go to the right you see the last column we have added a new column called season which has only the year values now we will use this column which is the season column to perform multiple operations okay now let's look at the total number of matches that have been played or held each season from 2008 to 2020 so i'll give my variable name which is match per season equal to i'll write match underscore data dot here i'm going to use group by function which is present inside my pandas data frame so i'm going to group all the season values so basically i'm going to group all the year values so that i can know how many matches have been played each season now i'm going to count all the match ids for each season so i'll pass in my id column dot and i'll use my count function then i'll reset my index using the reset underscore index function and then i'll rename my column so i'll write rename within brackets i'll give columns equal to i'll pass in a dictionary so i want to convert the id column to matches all right let me just see it again if everything is fine and i am going to print my new variable that i have created which is matches per season let's run this some error has occurred let me check it says match per season not defined there's a small typo here i have missed a s so i'll run this again there you go you can see in the result we have all the seasons starting from 2008 till 2020 and here we have all the matches that were played in each season so you can see here in season 2013 there were the highest number of matches that were played which was 76 then in 2012 there were 74 matches similarly in 2011 we have 73 and if you see this result in 2008 less number of matches were played overall which was 58 oh no it's actually 2009 where 57 matches were played okay now we will visualize the above result by creating a bar graph that will show the number of matches held each year so i am going to make use of this table and using this table we'll create a bar graph now to create a bar graph i'll use my seaborn library which i had imported as sns i'll write sns dot count plot which is to count the number of matches so i'll pass in my data frame which is match underscore data and i'll give my variable as season or the column name as season next we'll use our matplotlib library i'll write plt dot x ticks which is an attribute to edit our x labels I'll give the parameters rotation equal to 45 and I'll give my font size as let's say 10 similarly I'll use plt dot y ticks and I'll give my font size as 10 now I'll edit my x labels I'll write plt dot x label in the x label we'll have the season values i'll give my font size as 10 then 
let me just copy this we'll have our plt dot y label and our y axis would have the count font size let it be 10 then we'll give the title to our bar graph so i'll write plt dot title and within single quotes i'll give a title to my plot which is total matches played in each season we'll also give a font size of let's say 10 again and i'll use font weight as bold all right let me now run this and show you how our graph looks like there you go so we have a nice bar graph on the top you can see the title of the graph which says total matches played in each season on the y-axis we have the label as count on the x-axis we have the label as season and now let me show you what I meant by x ticks and y ticks so I had rotated my x values by 45 so you can see the EO values have been tilted and printed with 45 degrees and then I had set my font size to be 10 so this is font size 10 and similarly count also we have font size 10 now let's say if I want to rotate this by 90 and I print it you see here the EO values are now rotated in 90 degrees now what happens if I just remove this parameter and we'll only have font size if I print it you see this has been printed in horizontal order like we have it in the count column I'll just paste it here again I'll okay now let's run it so I have my your values okay we'll move ahead and perform some more analysis so in my current cell which you see here I am merging two columns from the matches data frame to balls data frame using a left join so here I am adding the ID column and the season column present in my match underscore data frame with the ball data frame and I am using a left join and I am joining using the common column which is ID which is present in both the tables or both the data frames and then I am dropping my ID column let's go ahead and run this okay you see here I have added my season column to my ball underscore data data frame now we'll use this data frame now to perform some analysis now now in the current cell which I have selected let's visualize the total runs scored in each season so what I have done is I have grouped my season values and applied a sum function to the total runs column and then I have reset my index and I'm plotting a line graph you see here I've used SNS dot line plot which means I'm plotting a line graph to see the trend of runs scored each season I have set my face color as black we have a title called total runs in each season I've given a font size a font weight now before I run this cell let me change my face color from black to gray so that my plot is clearly visible again this palette you can choose whatever you want let me show you how you can select the Seaborn palette if I search for SNS palette there's a nice blog or an article from Seaborn and here you can see we have all the palettes here whichever you want you can choose there is hustle we have set to paired there are so many you can use whatever you like now let me go back let's run this cell there you go so here we have a nice line graph now if you see this line graph in year 2009 least number of scores or minimum number of runs were scored compared to other seasons 
we had the highest number of runs scored in 2013 which responds to this so more than 22,000 runs were scored in 2013 similarly we had a drop in 2014 which was around 19,000 or less than 19,000 runs were scored in 2014 and if you see for 2020 which was last season more than 19,000 runs or nearly 19,500 runs were scored in 2020 okay now moving ahead let's see our next operation that we want to perform I'll scroll down now I want to find the runs scored per match in each season to do this I'm concatenating the match per season data frame with the second column season data frame so I am dividing the total runs scored each season you can see it here so I have divided the total runs by the matches played per season now I have set my index to season and I am printing runs per season the result I am storing it in a variable which is runs scored per match let's just run this there you go if I scroll down you see we have the seasons the different seasons from 2008 till 2020 and you have the total matches that were played in each season you have the total number of runs that were scored in each season and then we have our last column which is runs scored per match so here you have the total number of runs or the average runs scored in each match okay now we'll look at the number of tosses won by each team for this I'm finding the count of toss winners and then I'm creating a horizontal bar graph so I'm using the value underscore counts function and I'm counting the toss winners for each of the teams and here I have used my face color as gray and then you can see I have set my title to number of tosses one each season my X label is number of tosses one on the Y label I have the teams let's just run this okay if you see here on the y axis I have the different teams and on the x axis I have the number of tosses won by each team you see Mumbai Indians so far have won the highest number of tosses followed by Kolkata Knight Riders then we have Chennai Super Kings then we have Royal Challengers Bangalore and if you see at the bottom we have Kochi Tuskers and Rising Pune Super Giants all right the next cell of code will help us analyze the toss decision across different seasons so if you want to find out whether the teams decided to bat or bowl first I'm using a count plot or a frequency plot let me just run this and show you the results so this is how the distribution looks like of the toss decisions across seasons the purple color represents field and the red or the orange color represents batting which means after winning the toss the team decided to bat first and the purple color represents after winning the toss the team decided to bowl first now let me explain you what this graph tells us in most of the seasons the team that won the toss decided to field first only in certain cases for example in 2009 the toss winning team decided to bat first similarly if you see for season 2013 most of the teams preferred to bat first and do we have anything else no if you see the other season even in 2010 if you see most of the teams preferred to bat first after winning the toss but the rest of the seasons be 2008 or be 2011 be it 2016 17 18 19 and even 2020 most of the teams prefer to field first after winning the toss okay now we will look at the match results to analyze how many matches have been won in terms of wickets meaning that the chasing team won the match we will see how many matches have been won by runs meaning that the team batting second 
could not chase the target we will understand how many matches have been a tie so far now to get that result i'll just write one line of code i'll give my data frame name which is match underscore data and i'll use my result column and then i am going to use my value underscore counts function if i run this okay there is some error here this should be value underscore counts and not count there you go if you see most number of matches have been won by wickets which means the team batting second won the highest number of matches and there are less number of matches that have been won by runs which means the team bowling second won the match and then we had 13 ties so far from 2008 to 2020 all right now let's address some more questions for example if you want to know which stadium is best for winning by wickets so i'll write match underscore data dot i'll use the venue column which is present in my match underscore data frame and then i'm going to use my condition as result not equal to runs and then i'll use the mod function if i run this you see here eden gardens is the best stadium for winning by wickets so you have higher chances if you bat second at eden gardens you'll win the match now see you want to know which stadium is best for winning by runs to do that i'll just copy my above line of code and instead of not equal to runs i'll write not equal to wickets if i run this it says firozsa kotla so firozsa kotla is the best stadium for winning the match by runs so you have higher chances if you choose to bat first all right now we want to know for any given ipl team which stadium is best when they win the toss so to answer that question i'll use my data frame which is match underscore data again i'm going to use my column that is venue and then i'll write match underscore data dot toss underscore winner let's see i'll write equal to equal to my team i'll select is let's say kings 11 punjab and then i'm going to use another square brackets and give match underscore data dot winner equal to equal to i'll write again kings 11 punjab let me copy this i'll paste it here and then i'm going to use the mod function if i run this you see here the result is punjab cricket association stadium mohali which is the home ground for kings 11 punjab so for any given ipl team if you want to know which stadium is best when they win the toss most of the times you will find it is going to be their home stadium or the home ground now let's verify this with another team let's say i want to know in which stadium mumbai indians have won the maximum number of matches so i'll choose my team as mumbai indians this time and let's see which stadium it returns if i run this there you go it says vankati stadium which is again the home ground for mumbai indians let's see for one more now i want for kolkata night riders i'll copy this and i'll paste it here as well if i run this again it says eden gardens which is the home ground for kolkata night riders okay the next question i want to answer is which is the best chasing team 
that is the team that has won the maximum number of matches batting second. So for that, I'll write match underscore data dot. I'll use my winner column and within square brackets, I'll write match underscore data dot result not equal to runs and then I want to use the mod function if I run this the result says Kolkata Knight Riders and Mumbai Indians are the best chasing team which means they have won the maximum number of matches batting second now if you want to know the best defending team that is the team that has won the maximum number of matches batting first I'll just copy this line of code let me scroll down I'll paste it here and instead of result not equal to runs this time I'm going to use result not equal to wickets if I run this it returns me the result Mumbai Indians which means Mumbai Indians is the best defending team that is the team that has won the maximum number of matches batting first now this one typical question that I want to answer now is does winning the toss mean winning the match to answer that I'll create a variable called toss equal to I'll write match underscore data I use my column that is toss winner then I'm going to compare it with equal to equal to match underscore data and then I'll see the winner so here I'm choosing who won the toss and whether the same team was the winner I'll create a plot here I'll write plt dot figure I'm going to give a figure size I'll write fig size which is my attribute present inside the matplotlib function and I'll give my figure size as 10 comma 5 I'll use my count plot function present in the Seaborn library and I am going to count the toss and I'll display it using plt.show let's run this okay we have a nice bar graph which says winning the toss doesn't necessarily mean winning the match you can see we have a lot of false values here which means after winning the toss the team did not win the match but there are a lot of true values as well now I want to answer one more question which is does choosing batting or bowling first help in winning matches so for that I'll create another bar plot I'll write plt figure I'll give my figure size equal to let's say 12 comma 4 then I'll write SNS dot count plot I'll write match underscore data dot toss underscore decision which is my column then I'll write match underscore data dot toss underscore winner equal to equal to match underscore data dot winner then I'll just plot it or display it using plt dot show let's run this if I scroll down you can visualize the result we can say that choosing to field first for the toss winner helped in winning the match than batting first in IPL from 2008 to 2020 so there are higher chances if you choose to field first you will win the match okay now we will use our ball by ball data set to see how a player has performed throughout IPL now for all these visualizations that we have created and we have seen so far we were using the match data set which had information about the matches played from 2008 to 2020 
from now on we are going to use our ball by ball data set so the first thing I want to do is we'll analyze a performance of a player throughout IPL so I'm going to take one of the popular players in IPL that is Suresh Raina so I'm going to create a variable called player equal to I'll use my data frame name that is ball underscore data and then within square brackets I'll write bats man equal to equal to I'll give SK Raina because that is the name present in our data set for Suresh Raina then I'll write data frame underscore Raina equal to ball underscore data within square brackets I'll write player then let me print the head of the data frame I'll write df underscore Rana dot head there is an issue here let me debug the issue instead of dot this should be an underscore let's run it now the key here should be capital and not small let's run it again there you go if you see here we have created a data frame only for the player name that is Suresh Raina you can see here SK Raina cool now moving ahead now in the current cell of code tells us how Suresh Raina has been dismissed throughout the IPL in all the seasons so here I'm counting I'm using the value counts for dismissal kind and I'm going to use a pie chart so let me run this if you see here okay we have the dismissal kind and there is a nice pie chart now this pie chart tells us that Suresh Raina has been caught for 68.8 percent of the times and then he has been bowled for 10 percent time he has got run out 7.5 percent of the times been caught and bowled for 5 percent he has been stumped for 5 percent and he has been given leg before wicket for 3.8 percent of the times all right now moving ahead in the next cell of code we are trying to find the runs scored by Suresh Raina in ones twos threes and in boundaries that is fours and sixes so for that I am creating a user defined function called count which will count the runs scored by Raina I'll just run this so that you get an idea all right if you see the results Raina has scored the maximum number of runs by a boundary which is 4 then he has scored the second highest number of runs by taking singles then he has scored the third highest number of runs by hitting sixes and has scored the least number of runs by running a triple okay now if you want to know the details of the match that had the biggest win in terms of run margin let me show you if you want to analyze the match that had the biggest win in terms of margin so you can use match underscore data and then within square brackets I'll write my variable name again match underscore data again I'll give a square bracket I'll say result underscore margin I'll give a condition equal to equal to match underscore data then I'll say result underscore margin I'll use my function that is maximum if I run this okay so we have the details of that match so this match was played in 2017 in the city Delhi so I'm assuming this match was played at Firuz Sakotla which is the home ground for Delhi Daredevils which is currently known as Delhi Capitals the player of the match was Simmons who is from West Indies you see here we have the venue which is Firoz Sakutla it was played between Delhi Daredevils and Mumbai Indians 
the toss was won by Delhi Daredevils but they lost the match and the match was won by Mumbai Indians by runs and the result margin was 146 runs which is a huge number when it comes to T20 cricket and you can see the season as 2017 okay now let's find the players who have scored the maximum number of runs so far in IPL to do that I'll create a variable called runs equal to I'll use my ball underscore data and I'm going to use my group by function so here I'm going to group the batsmen so within single quotes I'll use my column which is batsman and then I'm going to use the sum function over the column that is batsman runs I'll write batsman underscore runs and I'll give a dot and use my sum function and I'll reset the index okay now in the next line I'll write runs dot columns I'm going to create two new variables which is batsman and the second column would be runs next I'm going to give a variable called y which is runs dot I'm going to sort it I'll write sort underscore values in terms of runs so I'll write by my new column that is runs comma I'll give ascending equal to false which means it will order my result in descending order I'm going to find the top 10 batsmen in IPL who have scored the maximum number of runs I'll write reset dot index and then I'm going to drop my index and I'll give axis equal to 1 which means I'm going to drop it in terms of columns let's print Y so what I'm doing here is first I'm grouping all the batsmen and then I'm going to find the total runs that they have scored so I'm using the sum function then I'm creating two new variables or columns called batsmen and runs I'm sorting the runs scored by the top 10 batsmen in terms of runs let's run this okay let me check what is the error it says column not found batsman underscore run this should be batsman underscore runs let's run it again there you go so we have Virat Kohli, there's Suresh Raina, David Warner, Rohit Sharma, Shikhar Dhawan then we have Chris Gale, De Villiers, Dhoni, Uthappa and Gambhir who are the top 10 batsmen in IPL that have scored the highest number of runs ok now we will visualize the top 10 players who have scored the highest number of runs so this is the code I have written already now you can use whichever palette you want I have used face color as grey let's just run this and visualize the result there you go you have a nice bar plot and on the top it says top 10 runs scorers in IPL on the Y axis you have the total number of runs they have scored on the X axis you have the player names so the first player who has scored the maximum number of runs is Virat Kohli if you see the runs he has scored is close to 6000 runs next we have is Suresh Raina the second graph or the second bar is for Suresh Raina followed by Warner, Sharma we have MS Dhoni, Uthappa, Gambhir and other players cool now coming to our final visualization where we'll see the players who have won the man of the match award maximum number of times for that I'm using my column that is player of the match column let's run it if I scroll down you see here AB de Villiers from South Africa who currently plays for RCB has won the highest number of man of the match awards which is actually more than 25 I believe 
next we have chris gill rohit sharma david warner you have yusuf pathan suresh raina virat kohli and gautam gambhir who have won the highest number of man of the match awards okay so let me go to the top and just give you a brief on what we did in this ipl data analysis demo so first we imported our two data sets match underscore data and our ball by ball data set then we checked using the is null function to see whether there are any null values present in any columns of the data sets we used the shape function to display the shape of the data set we printed the total number of columns that are present in one of the data sets we saw how you could extract the season or the year value from a date column then we printed the total number of matches played in each season then we converted that same result into a nice bar graph then we merged two columns from one of the data sets to another data set which was ball data then we saw the total number of runs in each season we also saw the runs scored per match in different seasons now we visualized the number of tosses won by each season we saw the toss decision across all the seasons where we found out that most of the teams preferred to field first then if i scroll further you saw how to answer different kinds of questions then we also learned how you can analyze a particular player and their performance throughout IPL we saw for Suresh Raina and the dismissal kind we also checked the pattern in which he has scored the runs finally we found out the top 10 run scorers in IPL and saw who has won the highest number of man of the match awards so if you want to get the source code files and the data sets we have used in this demo then please put your email ids in the comment section we will share the files over email with that we have come to the end of the session that's all for today's video i hope you guys have found it informative and helpful if you have any further queries on any of the topics covered earlier feel free to let us know in the comment section below and a team of experts will be more than happy to resolve all your queries Stay tuned to the channel for more interesting content like this. Until next time, stay safe, thank you and keep coding.